Greetings folks, today I show you how to paint one of my personal Tyranid Hive Fleets that I've created for a kill team called Hive Fleet uh, Reinkodan. Reinkodan is actually the first Latin name of a whale shark, one of my favorite shark species in the world. <laughs> I love those giant derpy looking things. But I thought their color scheme is actually quite perfect for a Tyranid since it has a lot of variety with stippling lines and a nice little gradient of a aquamarine and a darker aquamarine. So for this Tyranid, I'm actually going to show you how to create that. First off, before even painting, I'm also going to give you a little tip for your kill teams. In Warhammer 40k kill team, it is a small unit of 3 to 20 miniatures with varying points equaling up to no more than 100 points. And with Tyranids, a lot of their units are similar to each other. They're meant to be a swarm team with either some variation of gene stealers, hormigots, which is what I'm hurting, which, which is what I am not holding right here. This is a termagant. Termagants are the ones with the guns, hormigants are the ones with the scything talons. A lot of people get those two confused, which is honestly pretty easy to understand. Hormigant and termagant almost sound the same. Especially when you're looking at their models from a distance until you see, oh hey, that one has praying mantis arms. But for this particular model, when you buy a box of termagants, they actually give you a lot of different shoulder plate parts for the miniature. And these are just from old kits, but you can actually utilize these for your kill teams to help separate which unit is a specialist and which is not. I've also placed the toxin sacks on the actual gun that it is holding to give it an even more appeal and also to help find where the toxin sacks are. And the adrenal gland placement right here is a lot different than you usually see on the models where it will be on the upper part of the carapace due to the fact that in human anatomy, adrenal glands are actually located in the midsection of your body, the abdomen, a little more closely to the back of your spine. Adrenal glands can fill you with a lot of endocrine and it can help you boost adrenaline and metabolism, which is exactly the purpose of adrenal glands and tyranids part of their anatomy and lore. Now enough of that nerd out and weird science I threw into this video. Let's get started with our painting. Before we actually touch up the upper part of the exoskeleton and the carapace itself, we are going to use a wash all over the miniature. Now this particular wash I actually made for myself, which is a reusing an old stick it on scale green pot I had that had very low amount of paint. So I actually turned it into a wash by mixing a little bit of PVA glue, a little bit of, I forget the name of it, a little bit of technical art coat from Citadel or any other medium like that, some water, and the base paint. Mix it all together, leave it there for a bit, and it'll actually create your own wash slash contrast paint that leaves it with a nice hard finish that will make your miniature very durable. I will put up a video about this mixture late at a later time. For now, I'm just going to show you how it works. So first, just like any other wash or contrast, I'm going to dip my brush in it with a good amount and just put it all over this miniature except for the very bottom half of the miniature. So it's going to be on the plates here. We're just going to let it seep a little bit down there. We're going to put it on the upper part of the tail. If any of it gets lower, we can just come back with our miniature and touch it up with Corax White, which is what I base this miniature in. And we're just going to spread this all over our miniature. This will give it a nice light aquamarine tinge and it will help fill in all the creases and crevices on our tyranid.
Just gonna get a little more on my brush. For the weapon, we'll actually cover the whole thing, not just half of it. As you see, this wash is very loose and thin, and it holds very well. It helps to color all of this miniature, just like a wash. But it also gives it that nice tinge, just like a contrast would. It's a similar recipe I followed from other painters, such so like Midwinter Miniatures and this other artist I'm trying to remember the name of. They've made their own custom washes before and it's worked pretty well. And the ones I've made worked very good. Just let it pull a little bit, fix it up. So put it down like that, and give it just one more heavy dip, and just let it pull all over the miniature, let gravity do the work. Just on the very top of our miniature. And once this all dries, I'll be giving this a second coat, and then in about five-ish minutes, and then I'll get back to the rest of the video. Alright, now that that model is dry with the wash applied, only on the half top of the miniature, as you see here, there's a nice gradient transition from the light Stick it on greenish aquamarine color to the white on the bottom of the miniature. Now with this white we currently have, we are going to get a little bit of our apothecary white contrast and apply it to the white bits to give a subtle shade. So we'll apply it here, a good amount. As you see it's already starting to do the work giving a nice gray undertone on the deeper recesses. However, we will not be putting this on the underside of the tail here, since that already has a good little gradient effect going on. And we let the excess stuck it on green seep downward. apply in the chest right there. So far this little guy is looking pretty good. And we'll let it set for about a minute to let it dry and then we'll get back to the rest of the body. Alright, now that that is done we are going to apply our regular base paint of Stegodon Scale Green. Just water down slightly on the top half of our miniature. We are going to fill it from the carapace and gently downward to the actual exoskeleton. We're also going to be coloring the top part of this sack as well. With a thinned down version, just lightly thinned. Now for the rest of this. I applied a little too much water. Or not enough paint. <laughs> Probably both. Much better. Now you can see with this process, it's starting to start taking the peel 
of how the whale shark looks like. Now this color scheme is for my kill team. If you ever think of doing this for your army, I wish you the best of luck, because this takes a lot of time. This is just the bases and the uh, applications and the shading. Oh, there goes the Termagon. Before we actually start stippling and adding detail on the actual miniature. And apply some to the back of the head here and on the top half of the head. That way it retains that detail still, as you see there. And just lightly on the top half of the tail. Now we'll be doing two coats of this thin down Stegodon Skill Green. So we can get a nice good gradient color shift. Just put a little bit on the top end of that, give it a nice little curve. Much like what I did over there. Same with the hip. Alright, I'm going to let that dry for about a minute, then apply the second thin coat, and we'll get on to this third step. Alright, now with that dry, as you see it's finishing quite nicely. What we're going to do now is get a bit of contrast shy purple and put it on all of the segmented parts within the carapace and the vents. Exoskeleton, not carapace. So that way we can add a little more depth to our miniature. Same with the... The feeder to the devourer that it is holding. This will give it a nice bit of depth and contrast. Also giving it a nice little purple tone. We will also be doing this to shade the inside of the mouth. To help show that the mouth has volume and depth instead of just it being the same color as the rest of the skin itself. It's okay to color the teeth here. We'll be touching those up later. It's a white, we're just having the purple give a little bit of contrast. Whoops. It's a very intuitive process, because we have to get into each and every little detail. I 
I'll also put this on where the eye is, make it darker as well. See, now we're starting to get a lot of detail and depth with the miniature already. Just almost done here. Just need to fill in not only the eyes from the toxin sex, but also, oops, but also the little openings in the devourer here. Alright, we will let that dry for about a minute, and then we will get back to working on the rest of it. Alright, now that that has dried, we are going to use a little bit of our Black Templar Contrast paint, and apply it to the hooves, talons, and claws of the miniature. The black will help separate it very well from the rest of this kind of like dimmed aquamarine teal color scheme going on. So the black will really separate itself from the rest of it. But this particular one, we're not going to have super black. We're just going to use it as if it were a sort of wash. Give it a nice kind of gray tint. As you see, it's starting to already get that nice gray tone after it's drying, especially with our light application. Almost gives it a sort of smoky feel. We'll also be touching up the gun with this too on the segmented part.
All right, while those are drying, we can now go up to the most time-consuming part of this miniature besides letting washes dry and having it assembled together. We are going to stipple white dots all over the carapace to mimic the whale shark's dotted pattern. So we're going to be using our fine tip brush and our Corex white base paint. And we're just going to apply dots, starting from the front here. Very small. As you see, it's already starting to have a nice look to it. And then while we have this paint out, we can paint the teeth here. Yeah, look at that. It's already coming together very well. Oh, dropped it again. Look at that, it's coming together very well. I did mess up a little bit there, but that's alright. Because we have the Corex white out, and we could just go over it. Mm -hmm. Alright, back to our stippling yeah try to have some of your dots a brighter white and some of it a faded white you can easily accomplish it by coming back to when there's not a lot of paint on your brush that way we have a little bit left over. As you can see, it's already starting to take form of our whale shark. I'm going to put a little more here. As you see, we're almost done with stippling. Well, I'll just skip ahead so you don't have to keep watching. Now that all stippling is done, for the final part of this miniature, to finish it off, we are going to get a little bit of our shyish purple and just go into the creases here to darken it up to help separate each carapace plate.
Now for here we have to be careful because it's a lot smaller of a canvas than the back. And we'll apply just a little bit of this on the hooves. And there we are. One. Ooh, ooh, let me get my camera. There we are. One Tyranid. Termagant. In a style of my personal high fleet. Uh, I forgot the name of the high fleet. <laughs> it's personal, but I forgot it. If you like this comment comment and subscribe and if you want any other tyranids from the tyranid army in this style that you want to see feel free to leave it in the comment section below other than that you folks have a great day take care